Hey guys, Dan here from danstube.tv and today we had our second Mavic Mini Australia event and this event was focused on the FPV world. We had lots of discussions about how to get into the FPV space, what it looks like to fly an FPV drone, what you need to know, what sims you can kind of dive into to get your head around how to actually use an FPV drone. And we did have a special guest join us. We had Matt, also known as Elusive Karma FPV. We also had Shooter FPV join us as well. His name is Ken. So it was a really good chat. We spoke a lot about FPV and I learned a lot about how everything works. So it was really fascinating. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it, guys. Now, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Firstly, I guess I'd like to know Matt or Elusive Karma FPV. How did you how did you even get into the FPV scene? How did that all come about? Um, I started out flying DJI Phantoms and uh, Mavic Pro is my last one. Uh, I enjoyed the idea of being able to have an eye in the sky, and uh, I ended up wanting a little more challenge. Then I started watching these guys fly crazy, and it grasped my interest mm. yeah it's it's honestly ridiculous what fpv drones can capture like there's nothing out there even close to that it's Pretty just it's so unique very unique yes <clears throat> and who introduced you to it or were you already looking online and i was looking online i got into it alone which is a big task because uh there's so much to retain um but guys in the hobby are really supportive and uh, I got support from a guy that was in um, New York and I'm in Oregon. So it was really cool to have somebody basically nurse me through it when I started. Mm. Yeah. That's really cool. And are there any like uh, groups or forums or anything that you'd recommend for people to look at when they are considering this? Yeah, there's tons of groups. Uh, I mean, there's, you can pretty put, pretty much put FPV up in the search bar and it'll, it'll bring up all kinds of groups, but, um, FPV builders is a good one because that's, mm -hmm. we all start and it's good to know how to build. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that's like the fundamentalism. So it can is. you remember what the first like frame you got or the first unit that you built? Can you remember all that? Gosh, uh, actually the first one I got, it was, um, it was something crazy that it was really cool. It had a red canopy on it. And uh, I don't even remember what it was, but I bought it before I even got a controller, which was a silly <laughs> move. I just seen it and fell in love with it. And uh, yeah, I, I've had only two controllers since then. And uh, I don't know, I, I flew it and wrecked it and um, had problems. And then I, I got a, a Armat and Rooster is what it's called after that one. What is it? It's uh, it was called Armatin Rooster. Armatin was is the name of the company, and they come yep. with a lifetime guarantee for the frame. Yeah, nice. Yeah, lifetime guarantee, like, even if you crash it. Yep. Really? Wow. Yeah, the the frames are expensive, and the cages are usually titanium. Here, I got one hanging on the wall. Oh yeah, you got a few on the wall there. Oh yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Ken's got one as well. Oh, yeah. So you can see the cage there is titanium. That's basically usually when you end up running into crap. Yeah, his, looks a lot, his looks a lot, me a lot better than mine. But Nice, man. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I, I, I just finished building this one uh, last week. Cool. Nice. And I actually yeah. crashed, it. I crashed it this morning, too. So uh, uh -huh. what are you going to do? <laughs> Hopefully it's just props. Usually that's a cool thing because you just break props a lot of the time. Yeah. Look at I, I guess you can kind of. <laughs> oh yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <clears throat> so it's definitely a fun hobby mm. yeah it's uh it's nice because when you start out and you have your first couple of wrecks you're you're scared and you're worried and you walk over and you pick it up and it's usually just a prop so mm. it gives you a little confidence to fly a little rougher as time goes yeah yeah What's the go with um, with cameras, though? Because I noticed that on yours, you had a GoPro Hero, what, seven, eight, six? Yeah, so I got a um, – this is a 7-inch I just built. Uh, and I, I pack a GoPro 8 on this one. And then um, I have a couple that 
they have a session. So I have, I've had the session camera um, before I got the GoPro 8. And so all of my quads had mounts for that. Whereas now I'm kind of switching them out for an 8 mount. Or when I, when I build one, I just put an 8 mount on it right away. Mm. So I got a, a guy that, uh, let me grab 3D print. He 3D prints all my stuff. Oh, and he'll cool. just pick a file according to what frame I order, and he'll build me a kit. So it's uh, arm guards, you know, your camera mount, um, how you're mounting your antennas for your receiver. Wow. And then uh, usually a, a mount. This one has a GPS, but a mount for your VTX antenna that sends your signal back. And so you get to pick colors. It's It's fun. That's handy. So if you didn't have someone who could 3D print it, how would you go about getting getting that? Um, you can. Because uh, that's obviously can, all custom, isn't it? Like all yeah. The dimensions and everything are all like very custom. Um, so I go through a guy called Jack's 3D Printing, and uh, there's so many guys out there that do it. Um, you can easily just get a hold of one of them uh, over Facebook is how I found him. Uh, but I recommend Jack. He, he's uh, easy to work with, and uh, it might be different because you guys are in Australia. Don't want to order stuff from over here, which I understand it gets expensive. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure uh, there's 3D printers in Australia. Yeah, 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 definitely. And a lot of the uh, companies that sell these parts will also sell kits for. I mean, hopefully, quads that they carry and sell. Mm. But sometimes they don't always. Because one thing that I was um, curious about with the Hero 8 is I know that GoPro said that the lens on it is the, like it's reinforced. So it's like one of the strongest lenses they've ever produced on a camera. But I know that you can't actually remove that lens cover now. So you can't replace the lens if you crack it or break it. Is that true? Yeah, you know, it's, it's in there. It's not removable. Um, most of us that get them... Uh, recommend buying them new because you're strapping them to a drone that you're flying around and beating up and so when you get it new you just get a warranty with it so there's right. always there's guys that have like broke one or two a day and they're going in and i mean i think i i know at least one a day i think there's a, a limit to i haven't used mine yet but uh it's best to get a warranty because you're gonna break it yeah yeah and, and, I, and also with the GoPro session as well, I know that that was like really common in the FPV space, but didn't GoPro discontinue that camera? Yeah, it's silly. I wish they did. And it's a great camera. Um, I don't know why they stopped it. It makes no sense, man. Honestly, like now the whole market's open for all these other manufacturers to produce something of a similar form factor. Yeah. Even there's uh, one of the camera companies, uh, a couple of them are making the same exact shape profile camera. Mm -hmm. uh, they got the okay and it's a great camera yeah like i don't know if you've heard of the uh the fox ear box that was yes. quite big in the fpv space yeah they have a box too now so yeah yeah <clears throat> i wonder how that will work though because like i know that this is like not even really relevant to anything but um polaroid made the polaroid cube which was a similar form factor and then they took this actually is probably why it got taken down, but they took GoPro to court over it because they wow. believed that they were um, stepping over their boundary and basically using their intellectual property. And wow. I don't think they won, though. That's what I'm confused about because GoPro being such a major company, they would have had at least five, ten years in advance planning this out. And Polaroid came in and said that they've basically stolen their concept, even though Polaroid released their camera after the GoPro session. So, like, I have no idea, but maybe GoPro pulled the pin because they didn't want to deal with that anymore. I have no idea. Just really Weird, odd. yeah. That's some history there. I never knew that. Yeah. Because hmm. like, I was working with Polaroid while we were doing, because I reviewed the, the Cube and then their next one, the Cube HD or whatever it was called. And it was a really cool camera and uh, it did a great job. It actually had a magnetic base on the, like, underneath it. So, you could attach it to a car or anything that was, you know, oh, wow. which is a really cool nice. concept. Um, and it was a great camera, but I don't know, like all of that, they, they kind of disappeared for a bit there because they were trying to take GoPro to court for a bit. 
And then I don't know what happened. I don't know what eventuated from that. Crazy. Can you get a lot of the sessions still secondhand? I see guys selling them. Uh, they're like 125 bucks, 150 bucks in good shape, which is awesome. Uh, the thing a lot of guys like about the GoPro 8, it, it's, uh, it's got hyper smooth. So mm -hmm. it, it steadies everything out for you. It takes away all your imperfections pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> Amazing what they've done with that because that's all software as well. They haven't got any mechanical stabilization. It's honestly remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even a Go Steady program, I guess, that you can run through a computer yeah. to steady it out even more. I, I actually use that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? Well, it, it, it works pretty well, but the funny thing is, is that it doesn't really work well with the 8 because um, of the stabilization that's built into the 8 anyway. Um, so they say the best camera to, that it works with is the 6. So that's why I got a 6 um, I don't know, about two months ago because you don't need, um, with, a, with a 7 and a, the, uh, the session, you have to have like a kind of a special uh, soft mount. So that way it takes a lot of the vibration out of it. Yeah, and if you don't, it won't work that well. So, but they say the six, anything you want, just throw it in, and it works pretty well. So, um, mm. and the session I have, I have one five inch that I just use for cruising. I don't do any crazy. I, I, not that I'm really that good anyway, but um, I just kind of cruise with it. And so I had to make a special mount. Um, I actually found one um, to three D print. I have my own three D printer, so it um, cool. it works pretty well. Um, but you just got to be careful and. I think it, it's called Real Steady, but I think um, last month GoPro actually bought them. Mm, wow. So I don't know. Everybody's kind of curious to see what's going to come out of that. I don't know what is going to happen, but um, being that the 8 is hyper smooth, I don't know how they're going to kind of, you know, put that all together. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm going to stick with the 6 now, and I'll probably still stay with it if something actually happens to it. I, I got it um, for about 160 on eBay about two months ago. So for the price, nice. it wasn't that bad. Nice. And for, you know, you don't have to mess with it too much. So I'm like, yep, that's, that's for me. Yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah. <clears throat> yeah. A lot of that, uh, low end, like we were talking the, um, it being rough and wobbly, a lot of that, uh, you can tune out through the tuning, you know, in your yeah. flight controller. Yeah. I do all of mine on the smart audio over my goggles cause I don't have a computer, but yeah, that's the one thing I haven't really nailed down yet is the uh, the tuning. I actually, my rooster, the one I just showed you, I just finished building that last week and it shakes like crazy. Um, <laughs> the reason why I crashed this morning was because I threw some, what I like to do is, um, the way I like to learn is I like to, I don't like to, the bad thing with tuning is that you don't really want to take tune from somebody else because everybody's different. But yeah. what I like to do is I like to take a tune from somebody just to kind of see where everything goes from default to what that person uses. So I can see, you know, why did they increase the P? Why did they, you know, decrease the I and, you know, all this stuff. I want to know why they did that to kind of make it, you know, understandable for me because I mean, it, it's so crazy. It, so what I did was I actually found a video of a guy explaining, you know, PID tuning and stuff and he has some tune. So this morning I plugged it in just for the heck of it. And when I took it outside this morning, I mean, I just moved the stick just a little bit and all of a sudden it's just going all over the place. So I might end up just keeping it because it's kind of really reactive. It's a lot better than what I had, but um, it's just nice to know where you where you came from and then where you're at, so you can kind of see what Definitely. numbers change and why they change. I like to know why. I just I just don't want to plug in a number and say, yeah, that works. That's fine. I want to know yep. why changing it from like a 45 to a 60 makes it better. Why? You know, or you know, or it makes it worse. And I should go the other way. So it's it's yeah. just better to know where you're where you came from and then where you're going to and why that happens. Yeah, I have a buddy that's, he's, uh, he's like my Bardwell. He knows so much about this stuff. <laughs> and uh, he's helped me out with tuning since I started. And uh, I'll usually bring my gains all the way down. I'll leave my P's at like 10 and I'll bring my I's down to five and I'll bring my D's to zero. And what that does is, it flies really loose, so it'll be wishy-washy. Um, but what I look for is the responsiveness, and I'll bring yeah, my peas. Yep. I'll bring my peas up to where it feels responsive to how I like to fly. And then when you let go of that input you put in, it'll do a, a wobble, and then you start bringing your your 
D's up to compensate. It'll smooth out that wobble at the oh, end of gotcha, your stick. Gotcha. So you do sense. sharp, you do sharp movements and you let go and you bring your D's up. Usually I like to keep it below 35 on my D's. Um, but now with all this up like programs and stuff they do, uh, they're all over the place. They seem they're high, but yeah. And I, I even put 4.2 on this rooster and it yeah. was, I mean, I just figured I'd try it because I had just built it. And so I've never come from anything else. So I figured, Oh, what the heck I'll try it. But so far 4.2 is, I don't know. I mean, it's just still a release candidate. So I just, you know, I, I just tried it once and I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just wait because I don't really want to start learning a lot of that when I'm still trying to get a handle on, you know, 4.1 and all that. I mean, I can fly, I can, I could build a drone in, I don't know, three hours, give me the parts and I'll put them all together. But when it gets to tuning, that's my only, my only weakness. Yep. There's a, that's what's cool about it. Cause there's so much to retain, you know? Yep. I mean, there's a lot to this hobby and that's, that's what keeps it always in. Interesting. <clears throat> but hello. Keith. Oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, did I, did I drop out? <laughs> yeah. Should be connected. Yeah, everyone's stuff for me there. So how did you get into it, Ken? What started you on this journey? Well, pretty much, pretty much the way that um, Elusive mentioned. I, I started with, um, well, actually, when I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid-50s. So when I grew up, um, when I was a kid, we had the Estes rockets where you put the little engines in the bottom and you shoot them up. And that's kind of what got me into, um, you know, getting into the sky at least. But um, then I kind of broke away, with, uh, away from it for a while. But then about six years ago, I got a Phantom Two. And that kind of got me into, you know, the thing, the drone scene again. And the first drone I ever built was a, um, it was based on a DJI 450. And I bought all the parts, you know, uh, separately. And unfortunately, because I didn't know too much, I took advice from people that I shouldn't have. So I got a lot of expensive parts that I actually still have, but the, the, the drone is still, you know, a part. Um, mm. Except for, um, I, had, I got a... Um, Tyrannus X9D, and I still use it. So that, at least, you know, I got my money's worth out of. Yeah, man. That's yep, what I'm there flying. You <laughs> yep. Yep. There you go. And then, so, but then uh, my first, my first, um, I guess, real drone I ever built was the Robocat 250. It has, like, the, the really, like, rounded, um, you know, front to it. But at the time, I still didn't really have any, like, FPV equipment. So I was kind of doing line of sight. And I was getting frustrated because I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't do line of sight with something like that. And I was crashing all the time. So I almost gave up. But then um, I was lucky enough to get um, some HDOs and all of that kind of stuff. And Wow. Um, but I still nice had some five-inch. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I still had some five-inch I still had some five inch, um, quads that I just, I, I was afraid to fly. Um, they were built, they were nice, but until I got the goggles, I never flew. So, um, the following winter, I just took my smaller ones cause I started getting into the whoops and all the indoor stuff. And I just took them outside and I just, you know, broke loose. I just said, okay, I'm going to learn acro. I'm just going to, you know, find an open field with a tiny little, you know, a tiny little whoop on a, you know, on a, not a windy day and just flipped it into acro and just saw what it, you know, what it did. And yeah. I just kind of learned. I mean, I still wish I was better. I mean, I'm not, um, I'm definitely not, uh, I'm not a Ladrib or, you know, whatever, but. Um, There's so but many still, of them I, out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just have fun. I mean, yep. um, also like you, I, I do this alone. So it's not, um, it's better to be with somebody because you can say, you know, you can bounce things off each other or, you know, the other person can say, Hey, why don't you try like a split S or why don't you try this? And Definitely. so I kind of, I, I go out without a plan really. And I end up, I'm noticing I'm doing the same things. So I just got to kind of review things and just kind of think about, okay, what am I going to do today? Am I going to, um, you know, work on my power loops? Am I going to, you know, do, you know, whatever, but I end up just doing the yeah. same thing all the time. But, and actually you're talking about Mavics. I actually just picked up uh, a Mavic air too. Um, cool. So I've always been into the aerial stuff and I'll still stay, you know, with that. But, um, yeah. I, there is a local group that we fly the DJI stuff, which is fine, but I don't have anybody, you know, for the freestyle stuff. So mm. yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. I understand. Yeah, do, they, do they have many freestyle meetups at all though? Out there? I see a few, right? No, yeah, I mean, not, not out here. In, in, yeah, in my area. I mean, I live in Rhode Island. I live on the East Coast of the U.S. So, I mean, there's really, in my area, there's not much for 
uh, for the freestyle stuff. But like I said, there's a, there's a group we fly DJI. I mean, we try to do it, you know, because of social distancing, we can't really do that much, but um, you know, we try to get together still. And I mean, and that's great. I mean, at least I'm with somebody else and um, mm. you know, we get shots of different things and all of that. So, I mean, being with somebody like that is good, but I wish I could fly with, you know, with somebody, you know, with the freestyle stuff, it just Definitely. makes it better. Um, Keeps yeah. it fun. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. I mean, I have a field right across the street from my house. I walk outside my front door, I walk across the street and I have a baseball field um, oh, pretty much all to myself. So like this morning, I went out at about, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock this morning. I just walked outside, flew my rooster, crashed it and walked back in my house. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have to worry about bringing packs with me. I don't have to worry about bringing tools. I just crash and go back in my house, change props, go back out again, you know? That's awesome. So, that works. Tough old rooster. Yeah, that is handy. But like when it comes to like different events, I know they do a lot of FPV racing events. Um, yeah. And then there's, there's obviously like a lot of FPV people out there because I've definitely like done a lot of searching through Facebook groups. And, you know, just for us in Australia, there aren't like Brisbane specific ones, but there are Queensland FPV groups. Um, and there's like a lot of activity going on, a lot of action, but... I don't know. It, they don't seem to really organize as many meetups. And I wonder why that is like, is it hard to fly with lots of people around you? No, well, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't think I'm going, well, I guess depending on like, VTX, VTX channels and things like that, yeah. but oh, still, right. I mean, that aside, I mean, there should still be no reason why you couldn't have five, six, seven guys together and just, you know, and just fly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's kind of like, I think why, it's more apt to like racing um, because you have a designated track you're on, whereas freestyle, you're just kind of making it up. You're flying yeah. everywhere, you know, there's yeah. no purpose to it. It's whatever you think is cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's cool. So what's the difference between like, I've, I've seen in the back there, you've got different size frames. So yeah. Like what, what is the different experience when you have a larger frame? Um, that big 10 inch frame up there is, uh, it's like flying, uh, it's like flying a raft. It's just big and smooth. Um, you can turn your rates and make adjustments to make it flip and roll fast. Uh, but basically the bigger one would be for a longer distance because it has better thrust because of the bigger prop. Right. Um, lately I've been into the seven inch quads. Because they, uh, it's, they're just kind of a good size. So this is that seven. Oh yeah. This is like a five inch freestyle. You can kind of see the. Yeah. Yeah. So that's seven inch diameter prop there, and you know they call it a seven five whatever just because of the prop diameter. The frames they vary in size. That ten inch uh, could run a thirteen inch prop if I wanted because it's just got big arms so but yeah it's at the moment you're what what did you say you're preferring at the moment what size the seven inch for the seven inch oh, uh, cut up me. <laughs> well he froze up again we lost them yep <laughs> but yet everyone else is fine <laughs> yeah. long... oh. oh is he back we lost you matt Oh no! <laughs> he's, he's sort of still there. <laughs> like he's still explaining it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he'll come out of the audio. Yeah. Maybe somebody in his house is streaming. Sounds like flatten. <laughs> yeah, they're probably streaming a movie. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Oh, oh he's, he's gone. Completely lost. Him. He's gone. Wow. I'll have to come back. That's fine. That's all good. All right. So how did, when you started, Ken, whether you, you were saying that you like to know like the, the particular reason as to why they tweak certain things and they give certain values to, yeah, to, you know, the, the when you're programming it. So like, do you have particular people that you were looking at early on when you started? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, just kind of like everybody else, there's Joshua Bardwell, there's Ladrib, you know, with, um, 
you know, wrote a riot and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm a sports photographer. So if, you know, back when I started, everybody's like, well, don't copy everybody else, be yourself. Um, mm. I like to get ideas from people, but I like to make them my own. So, um, and a, a big way of how I learn is I like to see what people do and I want to know why. So that way, when I try to visualize it myself, I want to know why, you know, like I said, why do you increase your P game? Why do you decrease your I? I want to know why. So that way it kind of helps me understand it better. Mm. Um, I don't want to just make changes, you know, willy nilly. And then all of a sudden I crash and then I'm like, <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have, you know, so I want to know why. I mean, I want to go like, you know, in increments. If, if I know that increasing the P game will help prop wash or whatever. Um, I want to, I don't want to just jump from like a 20 to a 60 for some, you know, just the hypothetical, you know, I want to yeah. know why I'm increasing it and how, you know, how is that making it better for me? And that makes it easier for me to, to kind of understand it and learn it. Cause uh, tuning to me is just the worst. <laughs> I mean, yeah. um, but then, you know, like I said before, is you, you really can't copy your PIDs from somebody else because they have their own style. Everybody does. Um, mm. If I get a quote, go yeah. ahead. Even the drones themselves vary. So yeah, I mean, you, exactly. got, you got the individual and then it could be the same compartment, com, uh, same components, same quad, but it, it will act different. Just yep. it's different electronics. And everybody's style is different. Yep. Um, you know, some people like it tight. Some people like it loose. Um, so it's just, it just depends. Yeah. And like, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I fly thumbs. I don't pinch. So sometimes pinching is different than thumbs and you know, people, you know, react a little differently. So, I mean, it all, it just depends on you and you just yeah. make it, you just make it your own. That's all. Totally. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, have you used your drones at all, Ken, for your sports photography? No, not like the, the freestyle stuff. I mean, I do, I have like the DJI stuff and sometimes I'll do it for some local things, but it's pretty much against the law to go to like a football game or a baseball game and you know, bring a drone up and start taking pictures because you'll get arrested pretty quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do have some local, um, some local baseball teams that are affiliated with major league teams that I know well, and I've shot their teams for you know seven eight years. And I'm actually uh, one day next week going to one of their stadiums and just doing some aerial shots. But there's nobody there. Um, I got permission from the uh, from the ballpark, and so I'll do that. But uh, generally, if you're floating above like a football stadium and there's a game going on or a baseball stadium, you're going to get arrested pretty quick. Is that yeah. because is that because of proximity of people? Yeah, well, that it's usually that, but also they usually have no fly zones that are over the stadiums because, you know, it, it is for public safety. Um, but they will, you know, and they even have, um, they have it in written form saying that you know you can't especially baseball, I think it's a quarter mile. You cannot have a drone a quarter mile from a stadium when a game is going on. Okay. Um, so I'm taking That's advantage. Of security. We have, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. We have a local baseball team that's affiliated with the Boston Red Sox, and they're actually moving out of Rhode Island and moving into Massachusetts. So this year was supposed to be the last year they're playing, and the stadium they're playing in has been around since like 1960. So I got permission from the team to do some video of the stadium because I don't know what they're going to do when they move. So I wanted to just do some archival stuff, maybe yeah. do something for the team, uh, put together like some kind of like um, retrospective of the stadium and kind of things like that. But they're letting me do it because we're not, we're not playing because of the virus. So. Yeah. We, we've got a similar uh, thing here. I don't think you can fly by the MCG, for example, which is one of the our major stadiums uh, in Melbourne. Um, I'm sure you, if you wanted to do it commercially, you could ask for an exemption for it. If you were, channel nine or something one of the media companies yeah. i'm sure you could get a drone in there but yeah. every day people can't i mean i do a lot of uh, events filming um for particularly medieval events and that sort of stuff ren fairs i think you call them over there um, oh, yeah, yep. and we have the same issue in terms of uh, proximity to people so i use the uh, dgi2 zoom um, because that allows me to sit further back from where yeah. the people are and just actually zoom in. Um, mm. Because if you're filming at 1080, because most of the stuff I do is on, on social, and um, you can get a full-time zoom at 1080, um, which is wow. just just enough to be able to get the detail without getting close to the uh, where the people are. That's really cool. Is it four times optical zoom? 
No, it's, t it's two digital and two optical. It gives you your four. Um, so you can go two times at 4K, um, but at 1080, you can go four times. Wow. Um, That's but it's, it's enough. I, I, I was Impressive. filming, yeah, I was filming a, a joust at uh, St. Ives. And uh, the four four times, it was enough to be actually able to get see the joust and see the the lances connect. Uh, whereas oh, I tried cool. it with a yeah, I nice. tried it with a uh, M2 Pro, and just couldn't get couldn't get close enough because of the crowds. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. And then when you go go for permission anyway, like that's a whole whole process. I know for us in Australia, we have to get I think five days in advance if you contact CASA, which is our civil aviation department that we have to contact i think you have to give five days in advance you have to give them a flight plan of what you're going to do if it's like a professional kind of gig as such yeah, and then they I'll, can just refuse it at any point yeah out here it, they only do that out here for airports if you're within five miles of an airport you have to um you have to get permission from the airport and sometimes that takes two or three days um stadiums are pretty much off limits um i actually ask permission because i know them and the sad thing is, is that I'll post it to uh, social media and they'll be like, oh, great. I'm going to take my drone down there and fly. And I'm like, no, you're not. No. <laughs> I, I got permission. So don't say that. Don't say, well, yeah, I can flew over there. So I can too. Because I don't want to, even, even though they're moving, I don't want to, um, I don't want to wreck my reputation with them. So yeah. um, I have to be careful about that. But, uh, you know, wherever I fly with the, with my Mavic Air, I always get permission. And if they say no, it's no. Yeah. But. Yeah. That's something I always wonder with the, the FPV scene then, because, you know, it's still a drone and I'm, I'm guessing the rules would still apply for that. And I notice a lot of people do bandos or they try to find spots that are just completely abandoned or that right. yeah, they're away from people, but yeah. are rules different with FPV or is it the same? It's a, uh, I mean, I, I just try to give people respect. So I'm not ruining the hobby for others. Um, there's a lot of people that hate it. And I just, I, I live around a lot of woods. So I, I fly in the woods. Uh, I'll, I'll fly wherever people aren't basically just mm. to just keep it simple on my end. <clears throat> I, mean, yeah. I, I see, I see a lot of people doing, um, shooting like motorcycles and cars, you know, yep. things like that. And I'm assuming that they get permission to do that because they're pretty darn close. I mean, I've seen some that, you know, I'm looking at it going, Oh man, they almost hit that person, but I'm sure that they have permission to do that. You can't just go out there and say, Hey, you know, I'm flying my drone around you guys. And you know, all of that. Yeah. 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 yeah flying through the passenger window uh, window and out the driver window. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably want to ask if you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So for both of you, for both of you, Ken, Ken and Matt, what's something that has, like, really surprised you about this hobby? Something that you weren't expecting when you jumped into it? I would, I would say the people. Um, I mean, you know, there's like 3% that, you know, might give you some trouble. But um, when I first started, there were a lot of people that was helping me out. And so I try to return the favor when I can. I'm on all the, you know, the Facebook groups, uh, FP, FPV builders and all that stuff. And I know nobody's going to know everything. And I, I'm the first to admit that, but I just try to help as best I can because I got help. So, mm. um, yeah. so I just try to do what I can to just, you know, cause everybody's going to be new. Yep. Everyone starts somewhere. Yep. Yeah. I, I totally agree with Ken. It's a, uh, it's really supportive to be in and, um, I enjoy helping others because it's like made a full circle. Yep. That's how I be in. <clears throat> I mean, in photography, it's kind of different. Some people, I mean, I love to help people out. I've had, I had, I was shooting a basketball game, a college basketball game. And a guy comes up to me with literally 10 grand worth of equipment and he didn't know how to use it. And I, that, that shocked me at first, but then I just sat down with him and I explained, you know, here's the, you know, the white balance setting I use for this arena um, showed him where the people come in and out, kind of went over the settings of his camera. And I mean, photographers, sometimes they don't do that. And I don't understand why, what, what's the, what's the problem? Competition. You know, that's the, competition, you're seeing competition. Yeah. Well, it's, you know? ego. it's ego straight yeah, up. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not like Stubborn. that though. I mean, if I see a guy struggling and they're asking me for help, am I going to say no? I'm going to say, you know, screw you. I'm not going to help you. Of course. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> Good so, man. So that's kind of why I pay it back to, you know, to everybody I can, you know, I, I won't like go out of my way, but if somebody posts a question that I know, I'll be like, well, this is what I do. And maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't, but you know, I just try. Well, and yeah, you're talking about the, uh, 
spend the equipment, you know, I see a lot of guys that are telling guys in this hobby, oh, you need this or you need that. And it's, it's not what you got. It's what you can do with what you got, you know? Yep. So. <clears throat> yeah, I have great goggles. I have, I have the rapid fire and all that stuff. And am I like, you know, the greatest pilot in the world? No, not really, but I do know how to use it. And it does help me. Um, you know, maybe it makes me better. I don't know, but I wasn't forced to, you know, buy this stuff and I won't force anybody. I'll say, this is what I use. But yep. it might not be good for you. I mean, I like the goggles. I like the, the you know, the fat sharks. I like, you know, how they just stick on my face. But some people like the box goggles. I just can't, I just can't do it. It's heavy on my head, makes my eyes kind of go weird. So that's mm. the only reason. But, you know, people say, should I do goggles? Should I do box? You know, it's all preference. And I'm not going to force you to say, hey, I have an HDO and this is what you have to have. No, yeah. That's just not, it's just not right. What, uh, what goggle foam do you use, Ken? Um, do you this, use the newbie drone? Yes, this that's what this one is right here. Yeah, it's really it's oh. really nice. It's uh it's real like it's really squishy. It blocks out a lot of light. I, I love it. Check really it out, do. man. You need to you need to get the uh, newbie drone. That's not oh, that, that leather. Oh. This this is so much better, man. It's, uh, it's, so you're forcing me to buy this now. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm it just works. kidding. It works really well. Yeah, maybe I will. I'll check that out. Because I mean, I've, I'm actually, it's kind of funny you mentioned Newbie Drone. I'm kind of, I, they, I call them, or they call me like customer number 10. I mean, I've been with them. <laughs> I mean, they were only out for a couple of months. And I, I mean, I buy so much from them. I know Chris and all the people there. And, cool. Um, you know, they're really, really cool guys. I haven't bought anything from them in a while. Actually, I say that, but I actually just bought a brushless whoop from them two days ago. So, but, <laughs> um, but you know, they're really, really good guys. And, um, you know, I love the whoops, you know, when it rains. I mean, it's funny because I work, I do IT for a school department. And because of the virus, we've been closed since March. But we have two huge fields that I can fly in every day. So I do. Um, mm -hmm. But when it rains, we have so many rooms inside the building that I can just fly in and just, you know, do the whoops and just kind of, you know, get my, you know, my flying in. So, uh, Newbie cool. Drone, uh, Newbie Drone's a great company. Uh, the guys are really great. And, uh, you know, if you ever want to get into that, start with them. They're really good. Mm. Definitely. I don't know if you guys have seen, um, the Fat Shark 101, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. How, Cause that's something that I'm, I'm curious about, like with this industry getting more and more popular, Obviously, we're going to have more companies trying to release a product that's ready for just the everyday consumer. Right. And uh, this is what I was speaking to uh, Matt about before. Um, the people that I've spoken to in the FPV scene, when I've because I've been definitely very interested in it for a long time. Like I showed before, I've been sent one of these to kind of test out, and you know, I dived into it, and it was very overwhelming, and it, it's a lot to learn. Um, and my head kind of went to like, well, is there something that I could maybe start with? Um, that, you know, I'm not investing too much money and it's something I can play with and get the feel of it. And then from there, maybe go on. Um, but do you guys, do you guys recommend diving just straight into learning everything? Or do you think there's any, like you were, you were talking about the, the whoops as well. Like, do you think that's a good place to start for people? Well, I, I think it, it depends on your background too. I mean, a lot of people are afraid of building. So, you know, uh, a BNF or, you know, RTF is, is really good option for them. But if you're technical, I see a lot of people saying that they have engineering backgrounds. So, you know, for them, yeah, maybe building one would be a, a good place to start. But um, I understand, you know, saying that it's overwhelming and, and all of that. So I, I would probably say like a, a kit like that with the goggles and the controller and, um, and the drone would be, you know, would be a good place to start. I mean, Emacs makes one with their Tiny Hawk. Um, okay that has pretty good goggles and, uh, and a controller. I think, I think it sells for about 150 or so, something like that. Yeah, not too bad. And that's the and actually, uh, Newbie Drone makes one too. And I it's do. funny because it, they actually have box goggles with theirs. So they actually made it so that you flip open the back of the box goggles and um, you, 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 well, you can pull the monitor out, but you actually can fit the whoop in there. Oh wow! Uh, so you can kind of if they you can kind of I think the controller even fits in there too. I think I'm not sure, but it's it's a pretty cool package where it's just all together and you can just you know carry it with you. Um, you mm -hmm. can even put batteries in there and everything. So, um, and they sold that for about two hundred, I think. 
Nice. Yeah, I I uh, I'd start out when I started out. I got a well, I got a drone first, but uh, I really put my time into a simulator. You can get a twenty dollars simulator on a computer if you have one, and uh, buy a controller, and then you kind of grasp how uh, different it is than your normal photography drone when you just start playing an acro on that. Yeah. But uh, smaller quads are definitely uh, good to start with because they. I started out with a three inch Japalara, it was called, and uh, they're lighter, so they, they take a good beating. You can mm. wreck it and pick it up and keep flying it most of the time. Yeah. And that's what you want, really, for your first experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, they have the simulators that are, they'll never be like real life because there's, they always seem to be too floaty. But yeah. they do have uh, training programs on them that will help you grasp better uh, what it's doing and why it's doing it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing I see a lot, and I, I really hate to see it, is somebody will go out and buy all this crazy equipment without doing a lot of research. And then they'll post yeah. the thing saying, I'm sick of this. I can't, I can't learn it. Um, yep. You know, I got, I got this and that and this and that. And, I think that's kind of the wrong way to do it. I mean, when I first got my Phantom 2 back six, seven, six years ago, seven years ago, I literally did research for a month because I wanted to know, you know, what I'm getting into. I don't want to just get something like that. And then all of a sudden my first flight, it flies away, you know, mm. but I think some people just don't do research. And that's why I try to, you know, help people. I hate to see those posts that say, I'm sick of this. I got this equipment. I can't get it. I can't take off. I can't land. Um, so, um, like Matt said, the, the, the Sims are, you know, the best thing I've tried pretty much all of them and they're kind of weird for me. Um, they are. I just used Velocidrone, um, two, three weeks ago and that one's actually not bad. So I might stick with that one. But, um, nice. for me, my simulator, like I said, was in the winter. I just took my whoops out because I wanted to get ready for the summer. So I took my whoops outside, just went to a big field and I mean, the whoops can't go far anyway, but I just kind of learned myself and just you know, flipped it into acro, went, you know, to see what it did. And I just kind of learned that way. I mean, I know that's not for everybody, but yeah, it's a safe way the, to practice as well, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's exactly. another thing. Uh, when you start out, um, you, you can put it in horizontal mode where it, it levels out when you let go of the right stick and it flies like a photography drone. Uh, but it's not recommended because you're not getting used to flying acro. Right. So it's i don't even have that a, a setting on my uh switches anymore i mean when you set it up you can set any of these up to to run certain modes and you can set it up to where it flies in acro air mode or in horizon or however but uh i don't even have that as an option anymore because it's i don't mess with it yeah i still do that on my whoops but because i fly them indoors and there's no way yeah. i'm flying acro indoors yeah. i don't know how these guys do it but there's just no way. I mean, I know you're not going to break anything by crashing them, but I just can't. Once I, you know, if I try acro indoors, uh, as soon as I hit the throttle, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> but I'm, but I like, I'm, I have a lot of toothpicks. I got a couple of toothpicks. I got some three inch. Um, cool. Anything, anything above the whoops, I, I, I stick with acro, I, and I just, you know, do them outside. Nice. Mm. nice. What are your thoughts on the drone racing league sim? Have you guys used that? I, the... I did. I, the DRL sim, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't like it, but like you I didn't. said, I, I don't really like any of them for some reason. Except Velocidrone isn't so bad, but, um, I just can't, I just can't do it. I don't know why. Yeah, because so, I know, like, I've got very limited experience, obviously. But like, when I was to fly this drone, and you know, like, however long it was after that, a couple of months, I jumped into the drone racing league sim, and it feels very floaty. Like, I had it on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. And yep. they've made it a lot easier than it definitely is in the real world. Um, and I wonder whether that is a problem then, because then, then you're kind of, um, you're brought into a false sense of security. And then when you actually do take your drone out, like yeah. it's completely different. So what I recommend uh, is I've, I've done, I've done liftoff and DRL. And, uh, you know, if you're just flying around the game for fun, um, I don't think you're going to get is good or is grasp the concept is good as if you go through their training and for me the drl training uh was what really made me understand it because at the end of the training they give you a course and then you 
are timed on the course and then they shave 30 seconds and then another 30 and then 10 and it really makes you strive to get it and i learned a lot from the the training not so much just flying around you know having fun but the yeah. drl training was uh i think what really made me grasp it mm. yeah yeah, cool. Okay, that's something I should probably look into then. Because I was just playing yep. around with the freestyle stuff, like just jumping in and flying around. Yep, that's what everybody does. But yeah. if, if you if you do the training, it really uh, it really makes you understand why the quad's doing what it's doing with your inputs from your controller. Yeah, cool. Starts out really simple and it ends pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, what do you think the future of FPV is going to look like then? Like, do we constantly see innovations in the space, do we think? Or is it just going to be incremental upgrades from here? Gosh, man, that's a hard one. I mean, I, 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 hope, I, hope, I hope there's innovation. I mean, I know yeah. DJI yeah. is trying to, to innovate, and I know that Fat Shark is trying to answer that. Um, mm. I guess apparently they're supposed to be coming out with a digital option. Um, I forgot what it is. Was it Bite, Bite Shark, Frost. I think? Oh, Bite, Bite Frost, Frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how that's, you know... I just wish I wasn't so invested in analog because I can't justify it. Um, I know that this weekend they're having massive sales on the DJI stuff, but I just have too many. I have like five, four or five, five inch quads. So I got a couple of threes and I just can't, I, I just have too much invested and I just can't do it. It's just too expensive. Same here. But if I was just starting, um, I probably would have. Yeah. I um, had the bite frost and, uh, I could not get that thing to display my average battery cell voltage or my link quality from my crossfire. And uh, I got rid of it. Nope. There's no, there's not much support for it. Uh, Fat Shark couldn't even help me out. So I just got you rid know, of it. I, I thought that there was something different coming out too. Um, there's a, there's a two they have out now, Bite Frost two, and it goes on oh, your dog. Okay. Yeah. Before. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that looks interesting, but the last go around, I'm just going to stick with analog. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sitting with a, you know, at the time a $500 pair of goggles and then a $150 um, receiver, you know, the, the, um, the rapid fire. And then just with all the quads, it just doesn't make sense right now. Totally. Mm. So, so the, you... sorry, go ahead. Have either of you gone along to a racing event at all? I haven't no. yet. I'm I'm just two years into this. Uh, I I'm not interested in racing at all, but I would like to do it just I guess to get the name out there to meet other people. Yeah, yeah well, that's exactly. what I was thinking. Yep. Hey, to watch, yeah. watch the event and connect with other people. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, a lot, yeah, of, I mean, a lot of cool people. You were saying about many in yours, can hey? Yeah, no, I mean they have some multi GP stuff um, in Massachusetts, which isn't too far away. Um, and I was actually going to be prepared to go to some, uh, cause they usually have some in the spring, but again, with COVID-19, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing. So, yeah. Um, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if, if anybody's curious about, um, losing their FPV drone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a, uh, it's a the buzzer. Five, you got the same one. It's super loud, and that's a little lipo on it. It's so loud. Rec, it's it's a beeper for you to oh. locate locate your quad. So it's got a light, little LED, and this bullhorn. Mm. They're like twelve bucks. Uh, that is so cool. When you wreck and your battery ejects on your quad, usually you can have a a beeper where your motors will tone from a a switch on your controller. And when your battery becomes unplugged, well, you're screwed. You don't yeah. have no burn control. So this will actually be for two days at like 120 decibels by itself. That's impressive. I don't, I, I don't know if yeah. you can see it, but it's right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are super now, handy. I have a, I have a, a trick for this. Um, I don't know if you've ever um, heard before, but I actually had – I bought the three-pack from Amazon. and. Cool. I'd only used one, but then it was in a quad that I hadn't used in a while, and the other two are still sitting in the in the package. So I went to use one last month on this one on um, on that frame, and it didn't work. And I didn't know why. I mean, I got a little a little red light on it, but 
nothing I did would make the beeper work. And I know that you don't have to turn it on in beta flight, you know, it just works. Come to find out that battery, if the voltage gets low enough, it doesn't charge because what happens is when you, when you plug in your battery, it, it makes will charge sense. that it'll charge that battery. So what you can do is you take the shrink wrap off, you desolder the battery leads from the, um, the circuit board. And I actually have somewhere in here, one of the cheap, um, the cheap quads that have the, um, the kind of basic one cell batteries. And I snipped the, um, the wire Our, from that to put a plug on it so I could plug it into that charger. It wow. kick started it, charged the battery. I soldered it back up to the, to the, uh, the Vive fly and now it works fine. Darn lipos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a simple thing. If you have one That's of the awesome. older, um, I just, you know, clipped it off the battery, the old battery. Um, and it was good enough to plug into that cheap charger that it came with. And it just boosted the power enough so that I could put it back on and, and it works. So right. if that battery dies, just, just do that. Yeah, yeah right. this is, this is another one that just right. had, I, I had to poke it out the front there. It's called a Hellgate buzzer. Oh yeah. You bar yeah. Barely see it, but those things are like twice the amount and they're the cheaper ones are just as good. So what, is that one like, even louder? What's the difference with that one you've got? I don't, I don't know other than the, the, uh, name brand. I think they've been around longer. I think Vifly is kind of like a, a knockoff, but they work great. So yeah. I'll go with the cheaper one. <laughs> yeah, sure. so how does that, how does it actually initiate the beat thing? Like what, what loss triggers of it? power, loss of power. So it's hooked to your flight controller. Right. And it's, it's input and power to it when you plug in it's charging it so there's a series of beeps uh on the other hand when you go to unplug it every time when you're done flying it goes through <laughs> it's beeping okay. <laughs> and so you got to hold the battery in and wait for its three beep chime to shut itself off every time you unplug it <laughs> but it's it allows you to find your quad if you go down and lose your battery so it's, it's worth it yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if you unplug your battery to, you know, to take it, you know, if you get, you're done with the quad and you unplug the battery, yeah, the, the, so, beeper, yeah. the beeper thinks you lost your battery. Yeah. So, so that's why it starts beeping. It's going, oh my God, I got no battery. Yeah. So it wrecks and your battery gets ejected. It goes here and it'll, it'll do that and it'll get three, four what? times as loud. Um, so that's just the first sequence of beeps. So to shut it off, Wait a second. And those three beeps tells you it's disarmed. Oh, okay. So if I left it plugged in past that, it would go back into activating when it got unplugged again. I uh, actually, so just for, for mine, I actually, because there's also, there's a button yep, on there as button. well. So I try to keep it within range. I mean, for me, it's just easier. What you do is when you unplug it and it starts beeping, you hold the button in for about three seconds and then it does that three beep. Yep, um, that's way way that's easier. Deep, and then it's it disarms it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times they're just so down in there, I can't get my fat finger in there to shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> but and the light comes in handy too, because if you're, say, you're flying to a tree or something, or you're flying into into the woods and you can't find it, even if you can't hear it, when it gets yeah. dark, there's a sensor, there's a light sensor on it. So when it gets dark, that LED kicks in and it's like super bright. And so if you're in the woods somewhere, you can actually see it flashing and. Mm. And you can, uh, you can you can locate it. Definitely. Yeah, I've got really a I've got a strobe on mine, and it does oh, the same yeah. thing. It works really well. Um, but I ended up taking it off and put it on my dog's collar because my dog kept on pissing <laughs> off in the middle of the night. <laughs> I was looking for it the other day. I'm like, where is my drone strobe? And it was on the dog collar. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. So you were, you guys were mentioning before that props are like the most common thing to break. What other yeah. things do they break on, on a quad? Um, All of it. VTX. So the video oh. transmitter. Oh, okay. This, this is what sends the signal back. And so your antennas, you get all kinds, kinds of different antennas. They hook up and this sends the signal back from your quad, from your quad back to your goggles. But this little thing. That thing breaks, doesn't it? These are, it's a pigtail. I mean, and it, it's tiny. Yeah. But a lot of times uh, these will break and you can just buy three or four of these when you get a VTX if you're wrecking a lot. 
it's smart yeah. to do so you're not waiting to get them. <clears throat> yeah, especially during uh, these times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Posted and whatnot. What I, what I do with the UFL with that connector there is once I uh, snap it on and I know the orientation of where that pigtail is going to go, I just put a dab of hot glue on it. Yeah, yeah. Even though, I mean, a lot of people say don't use hot glue on a VTX because it gets hot, but I've never, I've never had a problem. Use solder on it. Why not? Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it'll just take your whole VTX with it when it breaks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, part of, part of this hobby is just realizing that you're going to crash and you're going to break stuff. Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. That's why it's so. good to learn how to build. And, and uh, yep. my biggest thing was programming because I suck at computers. Um, mm -hmm. And I still to this day get help. Uh, but it's a supportive hobby. So yep. glad I got into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet as well, right? For programming and building. There is. There's a guy, Joshua Bardwell. He's like the FPV god. He uh, He's <laughs> easy to listen to and knows a lot, so. It's got yeah, thousands absolutely. of videos out there. Now, see, here's here's a new thing that they, that uh, they just came out with. Um, I don't know if it's going to help with breaking props, but you can see that these are actually oh. folding props. So do those, like, I've seen some reviews. Have they ever folded when you were doing an aggressive move or anything like that? No, I mean, it's it's surprising. I've had – I had them on a different, a different quad, and they flew, <laughs> they flew beautifully. Actually, I have – I have another one. I have a source one. This is a really strong frame and these props work beautifully on this. Um, wow. you know, power is great. The, the sound is really smooth. Um, this is a frame called the Mr. Croc. It's, um, from, from wow, that's Fly, interesting Flywood. looking. And I put them on these last week and I get no power at all. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I, I think it must be just, you know, motor and, you know, quad related, um, no power. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I try to just do a little punch out, and it seems like it's just trying to you know struggle. Once I get to speed, I'm fine. So it's your it's your KV motor and your pitch a prop. Yeah. You need a little bit. What KV motor are those? Um, my eyes are really bad, but these are twenty five fifties, I think. Twenty five fifty. So yeah, and what's 20... the pitch of the prop? Ah, uh, gosh, what are these? Um, oh, sorry, it's our eyes. Just curious. Oh no, 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 that's fine. I think I got I got one of the wrappers here somewhere. I'm so not actually... probably shallow. Like I've been flying watermelon props on my twenty-four oh, yeah. KB. Yeah. And uh, when I go to do a big power loop, there's not enough thrust there to project me enough distance to what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. So I went with a lemon lime. It's a steeper prop. Um, okay. But that's I'm, where it gets. There's a lot to it. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I like the 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 lower pitch. Yeah. Because I'm not that aggressive. I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, HQ makes the 51 433s, and those are those are really yeah. nice. The pitch is low. They're they're smooth. But this is this is the wrapper here. But all it says is that they're just 5.1. Um, so 5 5.1 F5 it says, and that's pretty much it. Weird. So I don't. Huh. I don't. I don't know. But the, it doesn't seem too aggressive. So that's why. I don't know. It, it, like you said, it, it's probably just the, the, the motor. Yeah, but, I don't know. But Yeah, so I don't know. It, I ended up getting them on pre-order. Um, I got them in about three weeks ago. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'll stick with them. But, I mean, one quad to work great. The other one, it doesn't. So It's weird because they should offer different pitches. You know, it's, yeah. it, it seems like it's one pitch. Yeah, I no. think for now, I think maybe they did that just to see how they would go. Huh. Um, it took them a couple of weeks to announce that. I guess they're doing a seven inch too. So, wow. um, I just saw that on their Facebook. They're, uh, I think they're in pre order right now. Nice. Yeah, so I got like these are by props. You, you get more. Uh, efficiency out of bi props i guess you get it's it's more locked in with like a tri prop but when you go to a bi prop um you get longer flight times typically and the bigger you go up in diameter with props the lower kv you go with your motor um these are apc props and you can see the 
they're just a little more aggressive. Mm. I know it's hard to, hard to see. But so when you get a prop, there's a readout on it. It's yep. seven by five. Oh, it's upside down. Seven by five E prop, electric prop. Yeah. Um, Actually, I have a, I think I have a I have a wing with a prop like that with an aggressive by prop like that. Hmm. Yeah. So like, I don't know if you can see that. These are fifty one fifties. So it's it's a five point one diameter prop by five uh, pitch, and so that's really steep. And you get the diameter number and the same pitch number as the diameter. That's when they're really like aggressive race style props. You get less and less pitch. It's more of your like freestyle floaty type of flying. Yeah. But yeah, a lot to it. There's just so much yeah, to it. There's a lot to it, hey. <laughs> but I, I think now nowadays though, there's a lot of resources. There's you know YouTube, there's Facebook, um, you know, which is which is great, especially even for you know, I don't really want to call myself experienced. I guess building I am, but. Um, you know, and even people starting out, I mean, there's so much out there to research before you get into it. Um, and a lot of good groups with a lot of, a lot of good guys and, um, makes it easier. Yeah. I just, this morning helped a guy, um, it seemed like his first quad wire up, uh, or at least wire up his first flight controller. And he lives in Texas. I never, you know, just met him on Facebook and, uh, helped him out today and he was excited about it and everything worked out. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, right? Uh, is that... No, there was Steve Miller, I think was his name. He oh, was, okay. Uh, I, I've yeah. seen him before, too, yeah. Yeah. It's it's cool. It's a fun, supportive hobby. So I like to support others because I got it when I started out. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. There's, he there's heaps of stuff on uh, YouTube um, Yeah, in terms of resources of building and um, flying as well. And I was looking yeah. at um, some FPV stuff. A little while ago, interestingly enough, it was actually yours, elusive. <laughs> so, oh, uh, wow. I, I was, I was like, because when you view a video on YouTube, it does a red bar, tells you you've seen it. And I'm like, oh, oh well, this is a really cool one, the breaking the rules one. And I'm like, hang on a minute, <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Awesome, it, I appreciate it. Yeah, I yeah, think it's it was about fun. the first 30 seconds or something, you fly into a tree uh, and yeah. then you oh, yeah. restart. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Good video. I always like to throw Rex in because it, it keeps it fun. Everybody likes to see Rex. I like yeah. to see Rex. Yeah. So yeah. I always try to throw him in there. Yeah, I mean, this this morning I I was three quarters into flying the uh, the rooster and I did a power loop and hit the ground. And I mean, the wreck was <laughs> pretty epic. So I'm I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna post that in about an hour or so. Cool. Yeah, nice. But yeah, I mean, I always put it in. I mean, why not? And you know, people say, you know, this is raw footage and all that. But you know, I, I that's all I do. I mean. I I, do, I burn a pack, I land, I edit the video and post it. I mean, you know, yeah. there's, there's, I, I don't, I don't know if people try to hide things or, you know, they want to make people think that they're good or whatever. I, yeah. I don't care. If I crash, I crash. I mean, there was one, yeah. I made a little intro to my videos and one of the crashes that I put in my intro was I was flying one of my toothpick, my small quads, and I literally hit dead center a steel beam that held some bleachers at a field that I was at. I mean, I literally, I, I couldn't have hit it more dead center and the camera actually, the lens shattered. Wow. So as soon as I hit it, it was static. Um, but that's so kind of cool. So I just put it in there. Why not? <laughs> Heck yeah. You know, I'm not going to be the only one on the planet that's going to crash. So. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. it. The way it should be on the internet, like aside from FPV, it's, um, you know, when you look at anyone posting on social media, a lot of celebrities or a lot of influencers, a lot of the time they only show you snippets of the best moments of their lives and they never show you the, the downs or the negatives or what's happening, yeah. which is the real experience. That's what everyone experiences. Right. So the exactly. fact that you show the crashes, like that's something that people need to see. It's not a flawless fr flight every single time. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. people might, they'll, they'll, they'll look at your videos and say, well, this guy never crashes. You know, well, he's yeah. so good. He <laughs> but it's like, no, everybody does. Everybody. It's it's a bit like horse riding, though. They say you, you, know, you can't ride a horse until you've fallen off 20 times. Mm. Uh, otherwise, yeah. you're just sitting on it. And so, yeah, yeah I, I suspect it's the same with flying. If you if you haven't crashed a drone, you know, 20 <laughs> times, you're not actually flying it. You're just controlling it. Yeah. And that's that's why coming from a photography drone and getting into this, it's scary your first wreck because you think the thing just exploded. 
but uh, <laughs> then you realize they're they're tough and resilient, and uh, it just drives you that much more to uh, push your limits and I guess um, not be so concerned about wrecks. Because mm. they're obviously yeah. built to take a, a hit, right? That, that's the way yes. they're built. Yep. Definitely. So are they normally made out of titanium? Is that common? Like the frame uh, itself? Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, right. Yeah. What were you yeah, saying was titanium? Well, oh, that was just uh, the, the camera, the camera protection. Oh, yeah, right, it's right, right. Just around the camera, the front end, the front end, basically your front arms. Yeah. This, this right here. And front oh. end, what, what takes a hit. Yeah. The, the yeah. camera set, the camera set back enough so that the cage will protect it in a crash. But um, they make a smaller frame, a three inch, actually it's like two and a half inch. Yeah. And um, I went head first into concrete, but the, they, the warranty, they replace everything. So all I had to do was contact them. I took pictures and said, hey, I crashed. And they're like, okay, you know, it took a couple of weeks, but um, you know, you get, the, you get the parts for free and it's warranted for life, so. That's awesome. Um, really good. Yeah, and, and like Matt said, it, they're a little more expensive, but if you think you're going to crash and you're afraid to crash, it's worth it to get a frame <laughs> that's warranted. Yeah. So that way, um, you know, you don't have to worry too much about um, buying a new frame, you know? Yeah. So this is a uh, Armatin. It's a Marmot. So you, you see how the frame is one plate? Yeah. So I also recommend... Um, to get a uh, one that has individual arms because you can just buy extra arms and replace them with oh, this yeah. i have to replace the whole frame oh, so right. it's i mean if you i i beat this frame up and haven't broke it yet but it's got a lifetime warranty uh it's been a great frame but uh i recommend buying something you can replace the arms it's just simpler yeah yeah I mean, that same company, they make, this is the small one I was talking about. And oh, cool. I, I took this one head first into concrete. So this, <laughs> this one right here was so bent out of shape. Um, and then all I did was call them and say, you know, take the pictures and say, hey, you know, can I replace it? And I did. But then I didn't realize until about a month later that in that same crash, I actually broke the arm. Oh, um, so yeah. I was flying with a broken arm for about a month. But this one is also a, a single frame as well so when they sent me the new frame i had to literally rip this apart and put take everything off of this one and onto the other one so um getting like a, a just a single arm is way better than just transplanting yeah. even though this is small and it didn't take that long um just doing one arm instead of the whole frame is you know way better yeah i'm assuming you can replace the arm in the field as well so if you do track yeah sure. yep crash it down and You've got spare, there you go. And you've got some spare arms in your bag, I'm guessing, <laughs> a screwdriver. Um, you can yeah. just yep. swap swap it out rather than having to take the thing home and do a rebuild. Definitely. <clears throat> yeah, it's fun. So you got different sized motors, different motors you can put on them. You can totally customize it. Oh, that's cool. These are kind of a spendier brand, but I burnt this one up. Had a bad ESC or something. Are they brushless motors? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're fun. That's crazy yeah. that they honor a lifetime warranty. Is that for a lot of the parts that it's, you buy? It, no, no, it's for it's for their frame only. Just for the frame, okay. The frame. Carbon That's fiber frame. Good. That's still pretty yeah. epic. Yeah, and they're, no, awesome. they're actually one of the only companies that do it. There was another company called uh, Flynoceros. But <laughs> as of as as of yesterday, they shut down. So oh. um, they you know made a lot happened? of really they, well. I guess they just couldn't handle it through the uh, through the COVID nineteen and yeah, right. Which was sad because they're a bunch of good guys too, and they are their frames were warranted for life as well. Um, wow. I actually have one of their small three inch frames. This is called the Baby Skull. Oh, cool! Um, and this is warranted as well. So. Well, actually, it was, but <laughs> I don't think it's warranty now because you know, <laughs> they're not they're, around anymore. They're not around anymore, which is too bad. I mean, I hate to see yeah. any kind of company, uh, you know, go under like that, especially FPV. And they were so good too. So, yeah. Man, you got a lot of quads. <laughs> I got too many. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I got I got way too many. I mean, I I took a picture the other day when I flew inside of my school and. Um, on one of my carts, I must have had, you know, my, I had my controller, my goggles, and then I think I, I, I carry with me daily, like, 
eight or nine quads between whoops and wow. other ones and stuff. Cause I, I, you never know when you're going to fly. I mean, especially with that work, I got, you know, the empty fields and stuff. So I'll bring my five inch and I'll, you know, take, you know, 10 minutes and just walk outside and fly um, and then come back in and, and work. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this thing. This, so this is a receiver, a crossfire receiver. Um, I don't know. I can't really help you scale the size other than my big old pinky, but they're Fine. tiny. Guys yeah. are sending these like miles. Really? It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So what yeah. is your go-to when you go on the field? What do you have in your bag normally? Um, so... Do you have a bag with everything in it? I'm guessing you would, right? Yeah. Um... So, I mean, I always got my, my transmitter, but I, uh, I got this bag. It's got pockets, you know, got batteries, big, big batteries, my GoPros, um, wrench, oh, yeah. tightening stuff, uh, you know, pliers, there's a voltage tester because they get a bunch of batteries and you got to know which one's charged. They don't have a button that lights up. Mm-hmm. This thing you can plug into a. I can plug right in, this right into the uh, iPad, and it's it's a Bluetooth thing that allows me to get on into the into the flight controller and do my programming without a computer. Wow, that's cool. So you can do that in the field. Um, and it's probably hard to see right here, but I've got a bunch of extra uh, antennas and crap. So this. This is a big patch setup that goes on my goggles. Mm. It's a big patch antenna for long range. So just, you know, a couple different things depending on what I'm doing. But yeah. goggles you really take the, the one quad with you? Or you take multiple? Um, usually, I don't know. I'll take a... I'll take multiple. Like, it just depends. If I'm going to, like you said, a bando or uh, going somewhere where there's a structure I want to beat up on a quad, I'll take one of my little five inch freestyle quads. But um, sometime I'll bring a seven inch or something to do some long cruising. I'm still learning both, of course. But uh, um, that's my, I like to fly, like cruise, make low fast videos, and then um, try to do good at flipping around and stuff, but it's hard yeah that just comes with so the many out there yeah yeah and it's you know a lot of it's it's not so good how, how good you are it's it's also uh just keeping it interesting you know because mm. it's um there's a lot of good pilots out there just like anything yeah i I just try to have fun yeah yep you know That's just definitely. i mean even though you know 98 percent of the time i'm by myself um Unless my son decides to come out. My son likes to fly my whoops sometimes, so um, so he'll come out and do that. But, I mean, 98% of the time I'm by myself. But I have fun. I mean, it's a good way to, you know, break up your day. Like this morning I went out there just, you know, just to – it was a beautiful day here, and we just went out and flew. Tomorrow morning I'll probably fly maybe, you know, one or two quads and just, you know. Thank you. <laughs> just, just, I mean, there, there's nothing better than stick time. It doesn't matter that you're doing flips, loops, you know, rolls, Matty flips, whatever. Um, yeah. Muscle memory. Just, That's just, it, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, just the stick time. I mean, it's always it, – any any stick time is good time. Definitely. <laughs> how long yeah. on average do you get out of a battery? A lot of that depends on how you fly. Um, and then, like, so like this, I went with a lower KV motor, hoping on longer flight times. Uh because it's lower KV means it's not spinning so fast. Um, mm -hmm. But like this is a 2200 6S pack and I can drain that in four minutes. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. Four minutes. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, but I mean, if I'm sometimes throttle hungry, so I'm always up on it, just <laughs> hauling ass. And, uh, you know, you can, so I learned to freestyle is how I started out and I'm, I'm learning to fly slow it's harder than it sounds because mm. yeah, I'm always that, wanting to be on the throttle that's that's actually my problem I, I always just want to go fast and I go sometimes yep. I, I go you know faster than 
my own for my own good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Totally. But um you know, and talking about cruising, I use this. This is actually a funky frame from uh Yeah, it is. Kebab Ooh. from wow. uh, Bob from Bob Rogi. I actually I've had this for about three and a half months. He didn't want to release it because he didn't want to release it because he didn't want uh he didn't want it to get copied. So he only lifted the um I guess embargo, if you want to call that, um, last week. So uh-huh. for this, th- for some reason, this thinks it, it just flies so smooth that I'm afraid to do any kind of flips or rolls or anything with it. So if <laughs> I want to just cruise, and this is actually the mount that we were talking about with the real steady. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, this is my session. So I actually found this online, and it actually oh, yeah. works. It works pretty well. Um, cool. So I can get really good stable. Um, I throw it into real steady and it, it just gets really, really good cruising. Um, nice. So it's interesting yeah, some re- design as well, the way that the camera protrudes out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I stick, I stick mine out a little further than get the props out of you. Well, but still, yeah. I mean, I could probably set it back a bit, but the screws, there's no screw holes to set it back a little bit. If it does, it's way mm-hmm. back, but this is like a dead cat. They call it a dead yep. cat because the arms are further back. So mm-hmm. it wouldn't matter anyway. The camera wouldn't be in the prop view. Yeah, um, but it's just even in, even in my goggle view, I don't like props in it. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. Yep, just like that. But just for some reason, this one here cruises so smooth. Um, I don't know if it's the motors, the props. I don't know what it is, but this thing is just it's it's just nice. It's just mm. it just cruises. It's just so smooth. And so this is another life that you get out of that. I could. <laughs> This thing, I've, I've flown for almost eight minutes. I got bored. I, I, just, I just didn't know what to do. I'm just flying around, and of course, I'm not doing any tricks with it. So I'm just kind of yeah, cruising yeah. around, and I'm going, I'm looking at my flight time, and it's like seven, seven and a half, and I'm like, wow, I'm going to land. I'm getting bored. I don't know what else to do. So, so you know, because this I, I don't fly aggressive with this one. It just cruises. So I just kind of go slow, and I just, you know, just go my yeah, way. Yeah. And... Is that a five-inch can? Yes. Yes, it is. You, you should uh... – I don't know if they have five-inch buy props, but you should try them. I just might actually. In in seeing yours, I might just I might just give that a shot. They're they're nice because uh, I mean you will increase that flight time if you want to um, with them, but they're also very thrusty on the bottom end. Yeah, yeah. I mean I I, I like how it cruises now, and I still probably won't ever do anything crazy with this one because just how it is, and um, I don't know. I just I just like it. I just it's just really I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. but yeah yeah so this uh i got this style where the camera is above the gopro oh, yeah. cam oh, wow. mounts up, and it's weird. weird something i didn't think about while i was flying along through the trees and it got whacked by a stick and Ooh. well that was my view i was looking at the back of the freaking mount <laughs> oh I, wow I barely was able to bring that thing in man it scared me um, but I learned on that one. Can't get too crazy with that quad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so always learning in this hobby, hey? Constantly. Oh, it's learning. fun. It's definitely fun. That's I recommend cool. it. Yeah. Um, I actually, like the crash learn principle. <laughs> um, yeah, you were talking. So. You were talking earlier about the three D printed stuff. There's actually a company called Brain Three D. Yep. Um, he's got a lot of good. I mean, he's got mounts for. I mean, any frame that you can think of. Um, so if yeah. there's something that you can't print yourself, um, he probably has it. Definitely. Yeah, he's, you know, what I found out, and I'm not I'm not to say, I haven't done any personal business with him, um, but his prices are high. And I know he does quality yeah. prints, but uh, I kind of like the little dogs, you know, getting, supporting the guys that are, um, the prices are half the price. And plus, I've, it doesn't got to be a perfect print, you know. It's just as long as it holds the stuff and is the colors mm-hmm. I picked, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I've I've printed stuff for people for free, just nice, just, just because. But I actually did order from him because this frame, he actually worked with Bob Rugi on um, designing some of the the mounts for it because of the special way that the front of it is. Um, so I actually did buy a mount from him. It was it was about fifteen to twenty bucks, but. Um, it's not bad. Which it, yeah, it's not that bad. But I mean, I always like to print it myself if I can. So yeah, mm. see it. I don't know much about the printing, but I got this from BMC 3D, and you can see how glassy it is. Yeah. Wow. And and the color matching. This is oh. actually 
two separate frames that bolts up into this and then it also goes around this mount wow so wow every everybody's talking about the g-code complexity and this and that and i don't know much about it but it's a nice print yeah, yeah that that wow that's really nice yeah he did he did nice work he's got a gps mount you, besides obviously like the stick like hitting the your camera there like how do you find having the camera above your gopro it's cool because it makes you look that much lower to the ground when you're getting low fast footage. Yeah. Yep. All right. So it, it's really cool because it places you right down on the ground. Um, that's what I've noticed about it. I don't like the fact that the camera is up here exposed to being whacked, but that's where I have a hard time deterring. Like usually I'll have a freestyle quad I'm flying around and then, um, I bring this thing out and forget that I'm flying a seven inch cruiser. Mm, so yeah. it gets, you know, it gets hard. I'm still learning both of course, but, uh, can't get too crazy with it for that reason. <laughs> it's definitely fun though. Mm. Well, I do have to head off soon cause I've booked in a gym session and I'm only allowed 45 minutes in there due to COVID. Um, well, good job, man. Yeah, you're like locked in, you walk in and they like look at you and they're like, all right, you got 45 minutes, have you got your towel? And then you walk in, they walk around and there's like 10 minutes left and they're like, all right, 10 minutes, guys. Um, but yeah, like any any last thoughts for for people who want to get into FPV maybe or any last thoughts before we, we end it? Um, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody if you need a hand, you know, and uh, don't be afraid to definitely do your own research. So when you are asking questions to somebody, um, you're that much more likely to get help if it shows that you kind of did a little research. Mm -hmm. And you find that most people in the community are pretty helpful, are they? Yeah, yeah, definitely so. Yeah, I mean, the people that aren't helpful, you got to think that, you know, they were in your position once. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason why they should, you know, they should be hateful to you or anything like that. I mean, um, you know, nobody wakes up one day and and all of a sudden they're Mr. Steele or they're you know Joshua Bardwell I mean you have to work to get there and some people forget that yeah. um, so that's kind of why I try to help out uh, and I you know I always admit I don't I'm not I don't know everything but if somebody asks a question that I've you know dealt with before and I'm, I'm more than happy to jump in and try to help out yeah cool yeah, yeah. nice well thank you everyone so much for joining um are, are you two open? Like, if anyone wants to reach out to, to either of you, are you guys oh, yeah. open? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Yeah, except yeah, it's though. almost mid, it's almost midnight here. I'm going to be going to bed soon. So. Oh wow, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm on cool. e I'm on East I'm on East Coast time. So. It's only afternoon here. You shall be awake till the wee hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, yeah. I think the one the one thing that's so crazy about this and the way technology is now, I mean we're talking to people in, you know, all over the world. And it's like, mm -hmm. we're talking, we're in the same room. So, I mean, I like, I like, you know, getting experiences from people in, in other parts of the country and even the world, like, how do you fly? Where do you go? Um, even just what your day is like and stuff like that. And it's, it's so crazy the times that we have that we're talking to people all over the world and it's like, you know, we're in the same room. It's just crazy. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, true. it's really cool. And we, we will have smaller. more events through the, the Mavic mini group. That's what we're, trying to we've got one booked in for next month and we're going to try to do one one every month but yeah it's remarkable it really is crazy that you can just jump in and all chat together i really like how zoom works as well like uh, how it lights up the box of the person chatting and it's just very visual and easy to kind of see what's happening yep. nice thanks for giving up your time guys really appreciate it no hey problem. thank you guys for inviting us i yeah. really appreciate it yeah, yeah no fun. no thanks for your time yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's good to talk to people. It's good to talk to, you know, trade it's ideas. Good to see you're all not quite mad over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we'll definitely yeah. keep in touch guys. And uh, yeah, jump in the, the group if you ever need anything. Likewise. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, cool. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks guys.